Today, I want to address a misconception that is often associated with the beliefs of Mike Mincer. While Mincer is often known for his controversial views on nutrition and supplementation, some people misunderstand his position on the importance of a caloric surplus in building muscle mass. Contrary to what some may think, Mike Mincer did believe that a person needed to be in a slight caloric surplus to put on muscle size. However, he did not advocate for excessive overfeeding or bulking, which he saw as counterproductive to building muscle mass. Make a conscientious, disciplined daily effort to keep your calories three to five hundred above the maintenance level. If you don't, you'll maintain, you won't gain. But I'm not suggesting that all of a sudden you should start shoveling down indiscriminately large amounts of food. You'll only get fat. And the calorie increase should conform roughly with the 60-25-15 ratio, with perhaps a bit greater emphasis on protein. Those who do as indicated and conscientiously keep watch of their calories so that they're in a positive balance of three to five hundred a day will be quite delighted. In addition to growing stronger every workout, he'll gain seven, eight, nine, ten, or more pounds the first month. I can't say with any certainty just how much you might gain due to genetic variations. There are slightly more than 600 calories in a pound of muscle. If you are stimulating three pounds of muscle growth a week, you will require roughly 600 times three, or 1,800 calories per week above maintenance. This translates to 257 calories a day above maintenance. I am recommending slightly higher so there's less chance of any slightest frustrating of the nutritional caloric needs of the growth mechanism. Let's assume, in your particular case, that your growth requirements don't necessitate a full 300 calories a day above maintenance. Mincer believed that in order to build muscle mass, the body needs to be in a state of positive nitrogen balance, which means that the rate of protein synthesis is greater than the rate of protein breakdown. This requires a sufficient intake of protein and overall calories to support the body's energy needs. However, Mincer also believed that consuming excessive amounts of calories beyond what the body needs can lead to unwanted fat gain, which can hinder muscle growth in the long run. If during this period of change, the bodybuilder continues to consume nutritionally a maintenance level of calories, by definition here, he will only maintain his existing physical mass. He won't lose, he won't gain, he'll maintain. It goes to the laws of physics or thermodynamics. You can't create something out of nothing. You can't build bigger muscles out of thin air. Certain nutritional and caloric values are absolutely required. What the bodybuilder will be doing by consuming a maintenance level of calories is in essence something less than desirable. To some extent at least, he'll be frustrating the needs of the growth mechanism. He did train to failure, which is what nature requires one do to trigger the growth mechanism into motion. Also, he is growing stronger, therefore the muscle is changing. When the growth mechanism is activated, you might visualize it as a moving conveyor belt of sorts, for lack of a better image, with a number of little men standing on top who are reaching up, they're reaching out to grab the nutritional caloric cement, as I like to call it, that it requires to build the second story, the new mass. But remember, consuming a maintenance level frustrates those little men. They are reaching up, but nothing is there. The body is only receiving enough nutritional and caloric values to maintain the first story the existing physical mass. In such a case, the muscle change I was referring to earlier, where the bodybuilder is growing stronger, will remain primarily a qualitative strength change. It won't manifest much, if at all, as a quantitative muscle change, i.e. a muscle mass body weight increase. In order to avoid this, the frustrating of the growth mechanism, and to do the opposite, to serve the needs of the growth mechanism, one must consume a number of nutrients and calories above his daily maintenance level. He must go into a positive calorie balance. This can be done in a methodical, intelligent fashion such that growth production needs are precisely met with little or no excess to cause any appreciable fat deposition. He believed in the importance of a balanced diet that provided the body with the nutrients it needs to build muscle without excess calories that would be stored as fat. 
According to Mincer, the key to building muscle mass was to focus on the quality and intensity of your workouts rather than the quantity of calories you consume. He advocated for a high-intensity training approach that emphasizes brief, intense workouts with heavy weights and minimal rest. He believed that this approach, combined with a balanced diet that provides the necessary nutrients and calories, would help individuals to achieve their muscle-building goals without excess fat gain. Mincer's approach to nutrition and muscle building was based on the principle of efficiency. He believed that by focusing on doing the right things, rather than doing more things, individuals can achieve their goals in a more effective and sustainable way. It is important to note that while Mike Mincer did not advocate for excessive caloric intake or bulking, he did believe that a slight caloric surplus was necessary to put on muscle size. He believed in a balanced diet that provides the necessary nutrients and calories to support muscle growth while avoiding excessive fat gain. His approach to muscle building was focused on the quality and intensity of workouts rather than simply consuming more calories. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and the information provided, please check out more of my videos and subscribe to my channel.